So what the heck is an ORM and why do we need it with Python? In this one, I'm gonna give you a simple example as to why you need it with Python, but we're gonna do it creating a CSV file. So what the heck is an ORM and why do we need it with Python? Well, this means object relational mapping. That's what ORM stands for. And you'll see it in tools like Django, SQL model, SQL Alchemy, as well as other non-Python tools use this concept of ORM. What it does is it allows you to write Python code and turn it into other kinds of code. So Python is not SQL or SQL. SQL is its own language. You would write SQL statements to run stuff in SQL. What an ORM allows us to do is to write Python to run things in SQL. The ORM converts it into SQL, as you will see if you go more advanced and use something like Django or SQL model. The idea here, though, is I want to give you a very straightforward example as to how this works using CSV files, that is the comma separated value files, and this idea of an ORM, so you can see what it looks like in Python. Spoiler alert, it's just Python classes with different fields in there, different attributes that we'd call fields. So if you go to this blog post here, this will be linked in the description for sure. We're gonna go through and create this blog post. Feel free to go through the blog post on your own or reference it later. First and foremost, of course, you already have Python 3 installed. If you need to know how to do it in depth, I've got a whole on course for it, or you can check out my simple step-by-step -step guide for Mac and Windows. The idea here though, is we're gonna download some only Python code. So the only thing you need to install here is Python. This is not true for things like Django or SQL Model or SQL Alchemy. If you want to use those other tools, they are far more robust than what we're gonna do, but they require a lot more installations to get going. In this case, we just need Python 3.8 and above on your machine, and then you can just go. Now, if you're not sure if you have it on your machine, go ahead and open up your terminal window. In my case, I'm in the terminal inside of the code editor called Cursor, and you can just do Python 3 dash dash version, just like that. And if you see Python 3.8, that's okay. In my case, I have 3.8 and 3.13 on my machine, but of course you might not. I'm gonna be using whichever version of Python 3 works and you'll see this in just a moment. So the idea here is we're gonna create a very simple model to store data about a person. So this is what that model is gonna end up looking like and that's what we're gonna end up building. Now all of this code is available on GitHub at this GitHub gist. I might update this link at some point, so use the blog post as your primary reference to get to this code. But the idea is once you have the code, it will look a bit like this, right? So CSV underscore ORM, this is the code right here. You're gonna wanna go to raw here, and then you can do a file save as if you like, and you can navigate to where you want to store it. In my case, I'm gonna navigate into my desktop, and I'm gonna go ahead and sue, do something like py, example, and then I'll just go ahead and install that CSV ORM to that file. Once I do that, I'm going to open up my cursor editor here, and I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that folder and open that folder up. And this is what it should look like, right? I'm going to let cursor access my desktop. I'm not going to do any chat, but here's the code in here. Not that big of a deal in terms of the code. There's a lot of it in there, but we're not installing anything else. We're just using this. Feel free to play around with this code. This is how you can learn a lot of things, or you could even chat with AI if you wanna learn more about this specific code. But the idea here is we're gonna create a file called mydata.py. And what I wanna do here is I wanna import things from this ORM. But before we do that, I assume that you know what classes are in Python. And so you could do stuff like age, is equal to 30, right? You could do this right here. And what you could do then is save that file with command S, you can open up the terminal, and then you should be able to do Python 3 dash I mydata.py. This should bring you in there, in which case you can initialize a person like that. So if you did ABC, or let's say Justin equals to person, then I do justin.age and hit enter, I should see 30, which is not accurate, but it is in there. So let's change it to something different and then we do just in that age, there we go. So this idea of Python classes is very, very common. You'll use it all over the place. Now, in some cases, you might not have the data type, but you will use this idea of classes all over the place when you're developing in Python. 
which is why ORMs are typically based in classes as well. So what we can do here is we can actually import our ORM from CSV underscore ORM. We can import the model class. And of course you could do a quick search for this in this one and just do the model itself. And here we go, we've got a bunch of code in here for the model class itself. And we also have methods like save, delete, objects, create, and so on. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and change this into a model. I'm also gonna bring in something called a char field and an integer field. And heck, we might as well bring in a date and time field as well. Now, all of this is in the blog post as well. So you'll see the exact same fields being imported in the blog post. But the idea here is our age field. We wanna use that as the, the actual field type being integer field, just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it for just a moment. We'll come back to this in a moment. But what I wanna do now is I wanna go ahead and do that Python 3-i mydata.py again, hit enter. We're gonna go ahead and create another person. We'll go ahead and say Bob person is age equals to 30. Now, what we see here is pycache comes in here. This is a Python thing. It starts caching some of the files. That's okay. But what we don't see yet is this data being stored. So if I run bob.save and hit enter, right away it creates this db folder with person.csv. If I open this up, I can see there's an age in here and an ID. What it doesn't show is Bob's name, but it automatically created an ID for us. That's what ORMs typically do because databases typically do that as well. So if you were to look through this, there's already a field for the ID somewhere in here. But the idea though, is that the actual model itself already created that field for us. Okay, so let's give Bob a name. We're gonna exit out of the terminal here. I'm gonna delete this old DB file here because we don't really have a good way to change that file. So I'll just go ahead and delete it. Next up is gonna be adding that name in, which will use a character field for this with a max length of some value. So the character field is typically for smaller length strings. So in this case, the string would be ABC123 or capital ABC and then some other special characters. These are all what would fit into a character field where the integer field is going to be only whole numbers, actual integers in here that you would store. Now these data types don't make that big of a difference when it comes to our example here, but make a huge difference once you wanna go into something like SQL. So that's important to note. I'm gonna save this file now. I'm gonna open back up that terminal in there. Now I'll go ahead and give Bob a name with person, name being Bob, age being 20, Bob got younger. Of course, if I do Bob.name inside of the terminal, it's there. But if I do Bob.save, I can actually save that data into this CSV file. So this is a key thing of ORMs. It allows you to save data for you. And of course, if you were to exit out of Python and do Bob, you don't have Bob being defined. And so the other side of this would be to actually retrieve Bob once again. So we would do Bob equals to person.objects. Make sure you call objects.get and then name equaling to Bob. And I did all lowercase there for both of those things. And now I can see that Bob is now in there. I can actually grab Bob's data and then I should be able to update it once again. Let's say Bob is 109 and the way we update it is very similar to what you would do with a class. But then if we wanted to store it into the database, our CSV file, we do bob.save, in which case we now can see there's the age and so on, right? So this is actually a very straightforward process. And that's why if you look into the blog post, you will also see this created at and updated at fields in here. So a lot of times you'll wanna track when these changes occur. So when Bob is first added into the database, you'd use something like this. When Bob is updated, you'd use something like this. So naturally, Django, SQL model, SQL alchemy can get a lot more complex than this. And they would be a lot better because a CSV file can't handle millions of lines of data. It also can't handle relational data as in we can't actually tie this CSV file to another CSV file. You can roughly do it. Databases do it much better. Databases also have something called indexing, which allows you to do lookups far faster. So something like this far, far faster inside of a actual database. 
but this is meant to just give you a rough idea as to what's going on with models inside of Django, inside of SQL Model, inside of SQL Alchemy. Now, the way you define models, the way you actually do the querying, the way you look up data, all of that stuff is gonna be different. The way I decide, decided to design this one was based mostly off of Django because it gives you an insight as to what you can do with the very robust and powerful Django. SQL model is very similar to that in that it is still Python, it's still classes, it's still a lot of this, but it shortcuts some things, but then makes other things maybe a little bit more challenging to do depending on who you are or who you ask, I should say. Uh, but both of them are great and they're still based essentially what we did right here. So of course, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more things like this, please let me know as well. I wanna go into a little bit more of the fundamentals so you have a better understanding as to what's going on instead of always just writing out the code and really not what's going understand what's going on. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you have another concept in mind that you're kind of struggling with, please let me know in the comments and I'll try to do that in the near future. Be sure to vote up others if you really like them. Now, if you want to see more, if you want to go into a lot more depth, be sure to go to codingforentrepreneurs.com. I've got a lot of courses there that go into a lot of depth and, of course, blog posts that will help clarify some of these high-level concepts. So thanks again for watching.